All right, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm Hai Xiang. I will be your host for today's uh, SLS Spotlight on You. So for today's session, we are delighted to have two active users of SLS uh, to share with us how they use it to, uh, in their teaching and learning. There will be a short question and answer segment after the whole session. You can find this information at the top right of every slide. So without further ado, let me introduce the two teachers uh, with me. We have uh, Ms. Uh, Harley Lee from Westwood Primary School and Mr. Ng uh, E. Nock from Boon Lay Garden Primary School. They are both HODs, uh, HOD ICTs in their respective schools and you will definitely find them, uh, their names familiar as they have been very active in sharing SLS guides and lessons on SGLDC or they might have responded directly to some of your queries. So without further ado, let, let us uh, begin right, with the questions I'm sure you are keen to hear from them. So Harley, um, maybe as a first question, mm. um, could you share with us what do you find useful about SLS um, when uh, using it for your TNL? Okay, um, I think for, for, for my users uh, who have uh, know, know me quite, quite well, uh, I'm sure you have uh, uh, share, I've shared a lot of resources with you. Yeah, so basically, when I, whenever I use SLS, right, I, I find that you just need a bit of creativity when it comes to designing or learning activities. Uh, for some recently, I've designed a lot of work games to arouse my pupils' learning interests. Yeah, so as you can see from my uh, SGLTC post, uh, uh, I actually created a lot of uh, work games just using SLS with very simple functions like clip and drop functions. So people will just have to form words using the radicals given and they can also uh, and I even make it more challenging for them uh, by using words that actually look similar so that they will also get to recap the words that they learned earlier. And other, uh, other work games is like, you know, um, free response questions where they will write the words using the given radicals and then and they, they even have to spot the mistakes by searching the mistakes and rewrite the Chinese characters. So actually, uh, if you ask me what SLS couldn't do, honestly, I, have, I don't have the answer yet because I, I find that we just need a bit of creativity to mm. overcome our lesson designing uh, challenges that we have. Yeah. So it's very interesting. I mean, one of the questions I really wanted to ask you is, how you came up with this radical, um, you know, writing oh, uh, thing? Actually, the, <laughs> actually the radical was uh, was created using some uh, some uh, software. Mm. So I will just screenshot uh, the words. Yeah, yeah. So uh, after screenshot, uh, after I screenshot, so I will, I will just uh, upload the images to SLS. Yeah. yeah, and it's about how we design the activities mm. because. Uh, SLS is a platform with many different functions. So that's why I, I always say, you know, we just need to think out of the box when it comes to designing of, of uh, lesson activities and always remember what does best for our students yeah. because it's just a platform, but uh, we, we have to go beyond the platform using our EPAC knowledge and how our learners will actually respond best to our lesson designs. Yeah. So that, I mean, to, 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 to me, I think that's one of the really... I mean, I look forward to your post because, you know, you have very interesting ideas and ways in which you can incorporate other applications mm -hmm. or other tools, right, okay, within SLS itself. And I presume that you use SLS as a way to kind of coherently bring everything together for, mm -hmm. your, for, your, for your children. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And other than the word uh, games, I also design many uh, different types of lessons for my students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, like, you know, um, I love, uh, I love, um, I love em embedding apps into SLS as well. Uh, uh, for me myself, right, uh, because I find that because SLS also have the, has the two column display, so it allows me to create a lot of bite-sized lessons. For example, like I can teach my pupils how to write Chinese characters, then they, they can just uh, practice immediately on the spot. And, and SLS also allows me to use it as a teaching resource in class. Yeah. And pupils will actually revise using the lessons uh, as a, uh, as a self-revision resource. And this will actually help pupils to retain what they have learned in class. Mm. And also, uh, I also love to uh, use SLS in the blended approach uh, le learning. For example, like we don't just design ICT lessons uh, within the two periods, but we can actually uh, space out our periods uh, over the week. Yeah. Uh, for example, like I, I always like to uh, embed a lot of activities in, into one lesson. For example, like uh, such as, you know, uh, uh, they can be playing group games, mm. they can be doing uh, home experiments at home, they can be doing research, uh, they can also be reading on their own self-directed learning. Mm. So, uh, as you can see, you know, one lesson is really spaced out over the week. Mm. Yeah, and it's not just for that two periods. Yeah. Mm. So this really helps me to, to think of the learning cycle, mm. how I can actually drive the four active learning processes and using KATs to help my pupils to achieve deeper learning. Mm. So yeah. I, I guess one of the advantages of putting it in SLS is that 
um, later on when you go to the next lesson, uh, you have the materials ready, mm. uh, right? It's already inside the lesson. Yes, 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 yes Rather yes, than, yes. you know, maybe a worksheet which the kids might have forgotten to bring or, yes, 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 uh, yes. you know, some other places where you have that, uh, uh, yes, those yes, resources. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And traditionally, you know, uh, we, we used to have PowerPoints in our classroom. But after having SRS, right, I find SRS can also be a teaching resource. So mm. it's not just uh, having PowerPoint as a teaching mode in class. Mm. We can have different variety modes. Yeah. For example, we can also change be between PowerPoint and SRS, where pupils can actually interact with the re learning resources on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I find that SRS is really very useful yeah. when it comes to designing of lesson, uh, lesson designs. Yeah. Mm. So I, I guess for the PowerPoint part, it's really about the fact that you can put the PowerPoint inside SLS and then mm. use the interactive features for, mm. for PowerPoint, right? It's not just typical present it on the yes, board yes, kind yes, of yes, uh, yes, yes, thing. Yes, yeah. yes. You know what about yourself? So for me, um, so if you see the picture I put there, it's, it's like a Swiss army knife. I, I, I echo what Harley shares, that SLS is really that tool, the bag of tools that we, 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 we need and we can use to uh, firstly, like the, the knife, right, is to cut through their, their mm. gaps, to, to mm. find out what they know, to clear the misconceptions. Mm. And, and I really appreciate the resources that has been shared in SLS, uh, all the, the ones created, not just by like, CPDD mm. uh, or ETD, but even the ones in Community Gallery, because that allows us mm. to have that ready pool of resources that we can use anytime that we need. So it allows students to learn, uh, not just during class, but if they're interested to explore other areas, other things, they're not confined to what the teacher is teaching them, right? They can have actually go into SLS and just find out anything that they want. So that is so powerful. Uh, and other things like uh, uh, AFL, so like what Harley mentioned, uh, you can uncover what students don't know. Yeah. And so the interactive, uh, the, the teacher pays quiz, the, the interactive thinking tool, all these helps to uncover that, that the the doubts that the students will have. Mm. Yeah, and I also really enjoy the course, the, the course mode because mm. then I can package all my whole lesson and I think recently I shared, right, how we can allow for student-paced learning. Mm. Yeah, because there is that course mode where they can progress from one section to another section mm. and that allows that students to really learn at their own pace, yeah. which is something that if there isn't SLS, uh, it's, it's very hard to do. Mm. Yeah, and, and during that, that, that session that I have with uh, the other session with Edpuzzle, where I was talking and there were participants from other, um, other countries. Yeah. So I was saying, I'm sorry, you all don't have SLS because <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah? We can do this because we have SLS. So I, I think that's such a powerful tool that SLS is giving yeah. to us. Thanks a lot. You know. So I mean, you're you are famous really for, for your self-paced, uh, you know, you're being a real champion of uh, self-paced learning and self-directed learning. I think one of the things that I'm sure you know, some of our, our, our viewers are also asking, given the fact that you're teaching primary schools, mm. um, they might have certain doubts about you know, uh, how uh, the kids, the younger children can take to self-paced learning. So what are some of the things that you can share? You know, using SLS, you, you, you have managed to maybe overcome some of these barriers or you don't think that this is really a barrier at all uh, mm. the, based on your experience? Mm. So I think at the end of the day, it's really up to you, us as teachers, how we design that learning experience for our children. Um, yes, you can't do everything, all right? There are a lot of things that I wish I can do, uh, but of course, because of the ability level, because of how young they are, we can't do it. Yeah, so, uh, but we have to understand our students. So I think that's one thing we first need to make sure we understand our students. And having that support in school is also quite important. Yeah, so as HOD, I make sure that we have enough devices in school mm. so that mm. any time that we want to make use of the, the SLS in class, mm. we can do that. Mm. Yeah, so that's, that's the first thing. You need to make sure that that support in school in terms of infrastructure is there. Okay. So if your school doesn't have that, please go and bug your HOD ICT and say, hey, we need the device, right? Yeah, and the second is really to, um, to help. So the good thing about using it in class mm. is that I'm there. I can help my students. So definitely there'll be those who are a bit lost, a bit confused. Uh, the good thing about using the SLS and doing that self-paced learning is I always tell uh, my colleagues like I've cloned myself mm. multiple times mm. because now I am uh, on every devices, yeah. right? Especially if I do my own videos or I'm able to teach using the device and that frees me up as a teacher to walk mm. around and to mm. guide those who are a bit lost, those who need help because I can go in. Yeah, that's right. 
compared to the traditional way where you're just lecturing, you can't, that, that poor child is there, mm. I need help, mm. but they, they, I can't help him because I need to teach the rest. It's almost like a superpower, right? It is. <laughs> you have multiple, <laughs> um, you know, almost clones or duplicates of yourself. Correct. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, mm. So, Hali, the, maybe you can share a little bit about how, you know, you found, you know, your mm. students responding. Because we, I mean, we, 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 I mean, over on our side, or SLS mm. office, we try to, of course, to you know, reach out to students. But I think the the biggest conduit for us to to be able to understand how kids are responding mm. to the to the platform is really through teachers. Uh. So mm. maybe you can mm. share a little bit about how you know the kids have enjoyed SLS or what what certain parts of SLS you mm. they, they like. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay, uh, actually, I've brought with me uh, three videos uh, to share with you. Uh, I've designed very simple lessons, but yet they are very. Uh, I, I think you can see for yourself in the videos. Okay, uh, uh, I have three videos here. So the first video shows uh, my pupils uh, doing self revision in class, and she's using Ting Ling, which I actually embed into SLS. So it's something very simple where pupils can actually learn on their own, and it's very interactive. So despite that they are in class with the device, but it's not it's not it's not a boring mm -hmm. lesson, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other uh, the other uh, video shows my pupils are actually playing virtual chess in SLS. It's something that you know uh, most uh, most of us may not think of an idea in, 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 in school, yeah. So they will take turns to ask each other questions as they revise the vocab words. So you can see that they are very enjoying, they are really enjoying mm. the, the lessons. Mm. So that's how we have uh, fun into our lessons. And the other one was actually uh, my P1 students, yeah. Mm. Uh, they are actually doing audio recording using iPads. So as they, as they use the iPads to record their videos, right, they can also see their own expressions as they read, they can see their own lips movement. So it's, it's mm. making it very interesting for the kids. Then they will share their videos on SRS. So as mm. they share, right, then when we, when we, whenever we have this peer feedback right to be very enthusiastic to give stars for their mm. friends so it's really it's really um it's really uh, SRS really uh, supports the ongoing learning process yeah mm. and even before the even during the covid period okay i have a, an, another video here to share even before the covid period when they are still seated in sm sitting arrangement mm. right but you can see that my pupils everyone has an ipad yeah. and they are very engrossed and they are very focused and this is a time where i really enjoy it because i can actually uh, 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 check in with the weaker pupils yeah and they're actually doing virtual game station in this classroom mm. yeah so mm. You cannot, yeah, so because they are, um, from the looks of it, they are all very focused, right? But actually, they are all at different game stations in their virtual world, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, and, and they can really begin with the station which they prefer. Yeah. So, I actually yeah. apply KAT personalization in these lesson designs. So, I, I, I guess, you know, just as a quick summary, right? So, you seem to be saying that actually, um, there's the interactivity mm. that's very useful, right? The collaborativeness, mm, right? People yes. are able to interact with you know, not just the system but also with, mm. with other, other, other folks. Um, and also, I guess, the differentiation of the personalization, mm. right? So they can proceed at their own pace, very similar to what Enoch was sharing, mm. right? Okay, their own pace. And probably even a variety, not just a, a pace difference, right? But there's also a variety of different mm. activities that they can actually all, all, all do at different, uh, at different times. Mm. So, I mean, maybe I just ask you another question, which is maybe um, one of the things that um, you know you you are sharing is also that you know SLS is just perhaps perhaps almost like a container, right? Okay, mm. it's a it's a broader tool set, but inside there the the tools that you can embed uh, seem you know great. There's a wide variety mm. of mm. things like tingling and and, and things mm. like that. So so well, would you say that um, that is um, something that uh, you have managed to perhaps as, as part of your own teaching you, you found or is it something that you know maybe your, your colleagues uh, shared with you or is it something oh. that uh, how, how, how do you perhaps even promote as I, HOD ICT oh, promote oh. these other tools because we, we do receive feedback that teachers will oh. just say oh I have to look at SLS itself the, the core features of SLS don't oh. seem very exciting to me right okay yeah, <laughs> yeah but yeah, then you know okay. you you tell me that oh actually actually they can do so many exciting different oh, things oh. but actually using other tools so how do you promote these other uh, tools okay, that are oh. embeddable inside the uh, SLS okay I will share with my teachers that we should always think of lesson designing first before it, uh, before EPEX will come mm. in. So, mm. uh, so usually when I think of ICT tools, right, usually I will think of what are my pupils' weaknesses mm. and what do I want them to learn from this lesson. So I'll, I'll unpack the learning objectives for, for them. 
and how do I help them to uh, uh, able to learn better? Mm. So that's where my ICT consideration will come in. So I don't just think of the ICT tools because mm. we just focus on ICT tools, right? Then we'll be just chasing after the tool itself. So I think it's better that we think about our learning objectives, mm. our learning profiles, uh, and our teaching approaches. Like for example, like I'm using DI, I'm using pace learning to actually help my pupils to learn better. Mm. So that's how e-pedagogy will come in. Then we think about the tools, yeah. So that's why I think that is why, you know, because of my way, I think through my lesson designs, that's why I'm able to overcome the technical uh, limitations that most teachers face. Because most teachers, they may feel that uh, I should have a look at the SIS features before I design the lessons. Mm. But actually, it should be the other way around. Mm. Yeah. I think that's very, very useful. Yeah. I think that's definitely coming from a pedagogical angle, right? Okay. And then being saying, okay, I'm not limited by what SLS is able mm. to offer, actually you should look at the flexibility that mm, they can yes. actually in, uh, link to other 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 tools. Uh, you know, what about mm. yourself? How, how have your kids responded to, to SLS and what are some of the exciting things that they find about, about mm. SLS? Okay. Yeah. So whenever I bring the Chromebooks in, yeah. their, their eyes will just light up. And, and I think the reason is not because of the novelty of the device. I think after a while, I mean, if you just keep using device, it's, mm. it will, the novelty will die mm. off. Mm. But the main reason is because they know that whenever the Chromebook comes in, or whenever we are using SLS or any other tool, that lesson is not going to be a boring, mm. the traditional, passive kind of learning. They know that they're going to be active. Mm. They know that they're going to be participating, they're going to be connecting, they're going to be reflecting. Yeah, so they know that it's going to be an exciting lesson. And that's what makes them light up, right? Since, and so that's why uh, it allows for that blended learning as well. That they know it's, it's not just them with the computer, yeah. not just them with the online space, yeah. but because they're in class, uh, mm. they can uh, talk, they can discuss. Yeah. So for example, think pair share, just a very simple uh, mm. strategy that we've been using. They can actually pair up, discuss mm. that face-to-face. -face, and I think that face-to-face -face is also as equally important uh, as the online space. Yeah. But after yeah. that discussion, they can then type it into SLS mm. because that's where the power comes in of mm. sharing. Because in the past, when we do the traditional thing pair share without technology, you will get a few groups to share. Yeah. Not everybody's voice is heard. Mm. Or it's the one that is the most excited or the loudest person will get to be heard. Mm. Yeah, but the quiet ones, usually their voices don't get heard. Mm. But with SLS, just the simple interactive thinking tool, they can type in their responses. And then everybody can start to see, hey, got different perspectives. Mm. And then they can start building on to each other's comments. And then as a teacher, we can then sieve out those that are really interesting and then spark that conversation. Yeah, so I think all these, uh, the way that we do it allows our students to be that, that to light up that spark, to mm -hmm. help them to start thinking. So that it's not just that, like what I said, passive learning. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so that's, that's why students, they really enjoy using the technology, mm. using SLS mm. to learn. Mm. Yes, and I quite agree with Ino because uh, because I just did a pupil survey yeah. for my class, yeah. yeah. And I just asked them what do they like about SLS. So it's not just the device devices itself. Mm. They love uh, ICT lessons because it promotes student voice. Mm. They are able to collaborate with their friends, mm. and they feel that their voices are being heard mm. in 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 class. Mm. And they really love that when they just show their answers, right? They really felt that um, the value in their work, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. not about. Um, it's not about the devices, it's yes. really about you know, a student voice being heard, right. my, my work being showcased, mm. I'm able to take control of my learning and I can actually learn, you know, that uh, they have high confidence in their learning. Yeah. So that's how we also nurture other values like character strength, mm. future ready confidence mm. in them yeah, through the use of ICT. Yeah. I think we cannot underestimate the value of actually privileging, I think, student um, voice mm. and, and also student choice, la, right? Yes. Okay. In terms of being self-paced and being be, be able to do uh, personalized kind of choices in terms of what what kind of activities they want to they want to do. So I think mm -hmm. this is very um, useful. Um, I think information and, mm -hmm. and 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 I think very good advice, especially I think for younger children. We we tend to think mm -hmm. that oh, young children right they they <laughs> maybe they, they 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 don't have much uh, you know things to say or you know we, we don't really want to waste time or things like that. But it's so important right mm -hmm. when they're from young right to build that confidence to say that actually. Precisely because I'm young, I uh, when the teacher actually privileges my voice, right? Okay, mm. and then you know calls me out, but not in a threatening manner, you know, through ICT platform. I think that's so 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 powerful, so mm. so so useful. Um, I wanted to come back and bring back to this this idea of tools. Uh, um, um, the um, I mean we've talked a little bit about tools, and I think the 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 thing that uh, we we mentioned uh, with regards to 
um, you know, even in your own sharing, you see, you show that basically actually there's many other uh, tools out there. So um, I think all of you, I think you're you're old enough to remember a time before SLS, right? <laughs> right. Okay. And it's not that before SLS we didn't have uh, we didn't have tools, right? So mm -hmm. I, I wanted to bring back this conversation. What? How would you? say speak to perhaps uh, teachers who perhaps have approached you and said actually i'm quite okay to use attack right okay mm. uh, tools right but then you want me to go through this additional step of going to sls and then put it inside sls and, and and things like that um i can also think of the pedagogical goals the mm. needs and mm. everything i can do that without sls how would you uh, respond to that how would i respond to that uh? mm, i'll ask the teacher so how do you measure the level of engagement and achievement in your class? Mm. Yeah, mm. because uh, sometimes uh, we may think that we know, but no matter what we do, uh, you must always triangulate into achieving higher level of conf uh, higher level of achievement and engagement among mm. our pupils. Yeah. Mm. So it's not just what we do; it's not just about how we design our lessons, but we must really ensure that our be our pupils are the, at the end there they are benefiting from our lessons. Mm. So so how do we know uh, about this? First, for example, like. Uh, I can have a video, I, I can have a, a few gaming, mm. I can have a few games in my class. Yeah. You know, it's just like any, any other teacher, I'm able to design my ICT lessons. Mm. But how do I know that my pupils have learned? So usually we will we, we'll know through uh, collection of data, then we we'll, we'll came to know through uh, 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 their, their score. Mm. So, you know, so no matter what we do, we must always be sure that our efforts will triangulate into pupils' learning. Mm. Yeah. So I, I guess you, you, you would see SLS as a way to not just bring together all these tools, but really at the end of the day, to measure how effective mm. these tools have been. Huh? Maybe yes. with a question or some kind of poll or maybe even an ITT, share, share with people, right? What? So I, I guess that's really, I think, the value mm. of, of, of how why you put tools um, inside, inside mm. SLS. Would there be some other tools that we haven't touched on so far that you, you want to share about, uh, you know, maybe for, uh, that you have used before? Uh, oh, okay. Uh uh, my two favorite tools are actually Nearport and Spiral. Yeah, because Nearport and Spiral it allow, allow, allows me to provide immediate feedback to my pupils, uh, especially for Spiral because the the way the the tool design the lessons because uh, because it actually uh, goes uh, question by question. So especially for low progress learners, right? You make sure that no pupils are left behind, mm -hmm. and uh, and for Spiral, I can actually return their work for them to work on their answers, mm -hmm. then to resubmit to me on the spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and can, I, I can even lock their iPads if they're not paying attention. So these are, uh, but I would say although they are my favorite tools, right? But usually I'll tap tap on tap on these tools together with SRS because mm. each tool has its strength. Mm. Yeah. But mm. how are we going to drive deeper learning? How are we going to drive our KATs, mm. right? We still need to tap on the strength of different ICT mm. tools. But of course to consider that uh, whether these tools are appropriate for our kids as well, yeah, uh, and whether our kids are familiar. Mm. So usually I will choose a few uh, a major uh, a few main tools. So I'll guide my pupils to learn at the at the beginning of the year so that they will they'll be familiar. Uh, for the for the year, sure. yeah, and, and learning will be smooth, lah. Sure, mm. sure. Do you find the children coming back to maybe old SS lessons, including tools that basically you have embedded inside there? Mm. Uh, do you do you find that you know maybe before exams do they do they come back and revise or look look at these lessons again? Uh, or is it uh, rarer uh, for that to happen? Uh, actually, actually, ever since I started using SRS as, as a teaching resource, right? I think my pupils understood that uh, whatever that their teacher teaches, right? Uh, she will always leave some quizzes for us to revise mm. at home. So that's how she conducts teaching. Then there will always be some quizzes uh, for us to learn at home. So, mm. you know, uh, it's, it's a culture that I actually built in my, uh, in my classroom. So my pupils will automatically know that whenever uh, my teacher has SRS lessons, right, mm. there will always be some work at home. Mm. Yeah, and then we will follow up uh, in the next lesson. Mm. So I think it's more of a culture that we actually build up. And it's not like, you know, it's just a tool for you to learn. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I feel that SRS also uh, molds the culture of learning in my classroom. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's good to hear. Mm. You know, what about yourself? Any tools that uh, mm. perhaps we haven't shared so far? And also probably your thoughts about how uh, you would respond to teachers who tell you, hey, you mm. know, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable using all these other tools uh, without using SLS. And what would the value add of SLS be? Mm. Yeah. So I think one, the, the word that comes to mind is familiarity. Because students are familiar with using SLS, mm. they have, mm. and if every other subject, every other class teaches, and ever since primary one and all the way up to P6, they have been using SLS, it's a tool that's familiar for them. And that's important because time is precious, right? Especially if you're using it in class, you don't want to waste time getting them to figure out this new tool, like yeah. 
or how to log in, and that yeah. takes up time. So being able to embed the third-party tools yeah. into SLS, yeah. that's a big bonus. Yeah. And that again allows that familiarity that I can immediately log in. And I've seen like P1 students, less than five minutes, they've logged into SLS ready to go. Yeah. Right? As compared to the past where they could figure out what's their username, their passwords and everything. Yeah, so I think that's one. Uh, but of course, like what we've mentioned, that SLS is just one of the tools that there is before us. And if you think that uh, there is another tool that SLS cannot do, please, by all means, go ahead and use it. Yeah. So for example, things like Padlet. Mm. Uh, I know it's quite similar to Interactive Thinking too, but Padlet mm. is like yeah. the ITT on steroids. Like. So it's, yeah. it's a lot more functionality. You can put in more things. It's slightly easier to use as compared to ITT. So that's something I go to mm. quite often mm. as well. Mm. Uh, things like Nearpod. Again, that, uh, the good thing about Nearpod is it's very easy to use. Mm. SLS, because of the need to cater to cross yeah. levels, yeah. Uh, it's a bit cumbersome, mm. it's a bit harder to use for the lower primary, mm. but mm. Neopod allows that drag and drop, yeah. that drawing, yeah. uh, that is something mm. that's very powerful as well. Sure. Um, the other ones that I use quite often is recording tools. Mm. Uh, and SLS, again, the recording is a bit, mm, I think we'll get there soon, but not yet. So like things like Flipgrid, uh, or yeah. now we're quite flip, it allows that students mm. to record themselves and yeah. also record their screen. Yeah. Right? So in project work, we get students to do presentations. So in the past, we get them to present in class. But again, time is consumed getting one by one. So now what I do is I get my students to create the slides mm. and then after that, they record themselves and tools like Flip allows them to record their screen as they are presenting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's very powerful as well because then sure. they create the content. Mm. Right? That, yeah. So uh, what other tools? Uh, Ah, yes, Google Slides, Google Sites. So uh, one thing about SLS is it doesn't organize uh, the content that well. Yeah, so you, yeah. uh, you asked about do students go back to, yeah. to go through it. Uh, most of my students don't because of the way SLS has been structured. Mm, mm. Like after it's gone, it's, it's, yeah, it gets yeah. hidden somewhere. Yeah, that it yeah. takes effort to go in and look for it again. Yeah, so sometimes I house a lot of my content, mm. uh, resources like links and all on, S on Google Slides. So that becomes their virtual home, yeah. Yeah, which SLS doesn't, doesn't really provide. Mm. And the last one is Brookert, mm. oh, my favorite tool, my students' favorite uh, place to go to, to play, to have fun. Mm. Uh, mm. I know SLS has started that gamification mm. Uh, mm. feature. Mm. I'm also sure they'll get there one day. Mm. Yeah, but mm. Brookert allows for that really fun element that you're learning, but you're playing, and they don't realize that they're learning because to them, they're just playing. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. actually, they're learning, which is what we want for our students. Sure. Yeah, they learn as they play. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You know. So <laughs> I, I think we have covered, I think, of many of these um, uh, functionalities or features that basically I think some of the other tools actually provide and you can use to supplement SLS. Um, maybe I just um, kind of um, start with you. This next question um, uh, is to say you guys are quite privileged, uh, you know, uh, being here. We are here listening to you <laughs> in terms of uh, you know, what are some of the potential mm. features that you hope to, you know, see? Uh, mm. Right now, things that basically, like you said, really SLS isn't there yet, mm. is it can't get there. But what are some things that you can see that's... Uh, keeping in mind that many of these tools synergistically are, are, are there available for you and obviously you have been using these very, very well. Mm. Um, are there other features that you hope that right now, perhaps even not really catered by by, by other tools, right, okay, that you hope that SLS will be able to provide in the future? Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think one definitely is recording. I, mm. I think that's a feature that my teachers, uh, especially language teachers, yeah. right, because yeah. like oral is one area that we can really use technology sure. to, to harness, to record themselves. Yeah. So I think that recording function is, is an area that I think we can improve on. Um, and I think uh, the, the other main gripe I have is the usability of mm, the, mm, the tool. Mm. Um, like when I want to create a lesson, um, to copy and paste certain questions, mm. that is very difficult because mm. I got to start the question mm. and I go to the start resource to get it out. So that, yeah, that ease of just copy, pasting, copy, pasting, yeah. uh, that is something that I hope that SLS can also sure, build in. Sure. Sure. Yeah, to make life easy for teachers sure, la, sure, sure, sure. So, so that we don't spend so long <laughs> creating the lesson. So ease of use, uh, you know, in terms of especially I think in terms of authoring, right? Mm. So trying to improve that uh, that UI uh, mm. for 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 you guys as well as like you said, really this 
recording feature. So I, I presume for recording, it's not just audio recording, but also video recording, yes. right? To be able to try to get that uh, into into SLS. Yeah. Right. What about mm. yourself? Hey, I hope the SLS can allow us to actually return pupils' work for them to oh. reward on their answers. Then they can immediately return us back back to the teachers to have a look. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that means more uh, more real time feedback. That would mm. be great. Yeah. And uh, but 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 uh, frankly speaking, I think my wish list uh, will be coming through in the upcoming mm. R18. Yeah. <laughs> because R18 will actually actually allow to actually use Google Docs. Yeah. Also one of my wishes uh, because I, I used to have Google Docs for pupils to do peer editing. Mm. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, and also um, the sharing of group resources because we also find that the sharing of resources can be better enhanced, yeah. especially when teachers can share resources within the school. Mm. Yeah, and this will really uh, enhance self-directed learning because we can also because it also means that we can share resources mm. and we can actually assign students for S S SDL. Mm. Yeah, because in the past it's, it's more like you know I share with teacher A, teacher mm -hmm. A will share with teacher B, but if we, 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 if we can have a a, a folder uh, that that works like a sharing folder mm. where we can easily access more lessons, so I think that would be great. Yeah. yeah, because it really allows a department to yes, work on the correct. teaching resources, and with more teaching resources, right, uh, teachers will teachers will also feel there's more work-life balance because it really takes time to put in good lessons mm. in SLS. So mm -hmm. if teachers can share, I think that would be great. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's 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 great to hear because that's also coming up in R18. So mm. um, you know this this ability to have a teacher group teacher only group right where mm. you can kind of share your resources with one another within a department right mm. okay so hopefully that that will actually meet some of your needs yeah you know you want to say something well yeah i want to agree with what harley said because the ability to share a lesson because currently now if i create a lesson it mm. resides with me mm. and if let's say i leave the school mm. this lesson actually leaves with me yeah that's right? right but mm. if there's a way to like now a shared folder yeah, like I put right. it all and this department English department these yeah. are all our lessons yeah. because currently now what uh, what we are doing in school is we are trying to create that repository mm. of quality yes. uh, EPAD lessons mm. yeah, but the problem is when we put in SLS and then at the bottom we say this SLS lesson belongs to this person <laughs> so if you want this lesson you're going to go and find this person yeah, yeah, which yeah. might be a problem maybe five or ten years yeah, down the road when right. this person leaves yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think that's that's a common thing that we have heard from, mm. from many teachers. Okay, so maybe at this time I we will go to Q and A. Um, I think there are some uh, folks that have been asking questions, and uh, I'm sure they are interested to find out ways in which we can uh, uh, answer uh, some of the questions. Ah. Okay, I, I believe there are feedback from parents about excessive use of digital device, concern about screen time. How do you tackle this? I, I think this is a major, mm. major issue, I think, with regards to younger children. So maybe, yeah, you know, you want to, uh, or maybe Harley, you want to? Uh, usually I will space out my work. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to give them more time to complete their work. Mm. For example, if their week has assessments, right, then maybe, then perhaps I should assign with a longer duration, mm. yeah. And I always make my lessons very bite size so mm. that, uh, yeah, so that uh, the amount of time that people need at home, right, can be minimized. Mm. Yeah. So I also try to have some some lessons in school, some lessons in uh, at home. That's why I, I always recommend blended approach in learning. Yeah. Mm. So I think we, we just try to space out. Yeah. And when and and, and, and in fact, when parents see their own pupils learning at at home, right? Mm. Uh, actually, actually, I also have a feedback from parents that that they find that their, their their kids are actually engaged because yeah. because sometimes you know uh, they may not be doing quizzes, they may be doing, they may be doing some uh, video video sharing. They can they will also be doing some uh, experiments at home. Mm. Yeah, so uh, p uh, parents to see that you know uh, it's not just uh, it's not just written work. It's something that pupils feel engaged in. Yeah. So I think we are able to win parents as long as we put in efforts in our, in our lesson design. Sure. And it's sure. not just paper and pencil uh, mm. worksheets. Mm. Yeah, so over the time, I'm sure, I'm sure parents will appreciate our efforts in their, yeah. in their, in their child's learning. Yeah. So maybe to summarize, right, so spacing, mm. right, okay, spacing out, and then basically making sure that, um, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's time when you do certain things in mm. school and then certain things at home right okay mm. uh, making sure that you have a hybrid approach and then also mm. of course communicating mm. i think with uh, properly with parents mm. uh, right yes. okay what's your intention for using digital device i think if that comes across very strongly to mm. parents i think they they generally have uh, less of an mm. issue yes. yeah I, yourself? I think no. when parents see that the learning is mm. very rich that mm. the students are that their own children are learning uh, the, the, they are not so concerned, mm. but I think what more the concern is uh, 
like outside of that learning, how do they, yeah. when they use it for non-learning uh, sure. purpose? Yeah. Yeah. So that's really then how do we educate our children to mm. be very responsible in your screen time, yeah. to take the eye break. Yeah. So these are things that we need to, to really teach uh, our children. Uh, and I, I guess it's something that we can't really run away from because we are moving into a very digital world. Yeah. Uh, so teaching our children, our students, how to manage the screen time, yeah. to do it in moderation, take eye breaks. I think these are very important yeah. things we need to teach. Sure. Yeah. It's also probably also that, um, you know, uh, communicating the idea that uh, not all screen time is the same, right? Mm. Because <laughs> you yes. rather that your screen time be used for learning, for rich learning and things like that, rather than using screen time for maybe uh, just video consumption mm -hmm. or playing computer games and things like that. You, you, you probably want parents to understand that there's a difference, right? Okay, mm. And then you want to in fact, encourage the positive behavior so that they don't always identify digital devices with mm. uh, relaxation and with uh, gaming, yes, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So maybe a uh, next question. Okay. Right. So given that all the students are on their devices, is the classroom very quiet <laughs> since they are engaged and plugged into their device at their own pace? Um, I like constructive noise in class. So, any comments on this? Okay, so like I said, uh, that's why the blended approach is mm. so important. It's not really they are fully online and then just, like even yeah. if their friends next to them, they're just talking to their friends online. That's not the purpose. Mm. I think the purpose is really how do you mix that whole, mm. uh, use the best of that face-to-face -face plus the online. Yeah, so like I shared, the thing pair share, right? You can be talking to your friends and then after that you go on to the, mm. the computer and then you share with the rest of the class and even to other people from other classes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so there is still constructive noise within the uh, students using device mm. or they can be asking questions. Yeah, so there's nothing stopping them from asking. Like, so like when they all are on, uh, watching the video, if they have questions, they can raise their hands. Hey, teacher, can you explain? So there is noise, it's not just all silent. Usually my class is not mm. fully silent because there is buzz going on. They will discuss, hey, what is this? Or they can be talking about it. Mm. So very naturally, they will start asking questions or showing their friends, hey, this is very interesting mm. and then all that. Yeah, so it's not, yeah, it doesn't, it's always not quiet. <laughs> Are you, any yeah. any I think thoughts about this? Yeah, I think it sort of depends on uh, which state of your lessons is that? Yeah. yeah. For example, like, you know, when I'm promoting thinking and discussion, mm. right? There surely be noise. Mm. Then it will be they will be quieter when actually I provide uh, uh, when I give them feedback. So mm. it also depends on the stage of your learning. Because because we have to go through the four active learning mm. processes, yeah. So I think uh, there should always be there will always be some noise uh, at different <laughs> stages. Uh, it's just that maybe, maybe uh, maybe when we see that that class, right, maybe it's a bit quieter. It's because you know they are they are activating learning or they are doing some self directed right. work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's always a there's always a mixture, la. Yeah. yeah. So this was a very interesting question, <laughs> actually, right? Okay, because I, I'm just thinking, um, you know, when we talk about constructive void uh, noise, right? Whether or not we we are <coughs> actually perhaps sometimes mistakenly um, equating, you know, engagement or noise with necessarily with learning, right? So mm -hmm. I think your point about making sure that you know you have different points in time right there there's the collaborative period when my kids have conversation with each other and there's also the quiet reflective times mm. when you can actually uh, come up and noise doesn't necessarily mean voice as well mm. right mm. Mm. because the noise is actually the most noisy people might be the ones yes. that are they're always you know volunteering uh, you know their, 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 right. their, their opinions but then you miss out on the yeah. quieter ones uh, who actually has more of a voice when they are given the platform like in an ITT mm. to yeah. be able to come and give up. Mm. So actually a very interesting question mm. um, to, to kind of think through, right? Mm. Okay, whether or not, you know, constructive noise is always, uh, always a positive. Yeah, let me yeah. add on to that. It's not just audio noise, it's actually virtual noise because yeah. they are so <laughs> engrossed, they are sharing up their That's ideas. Right. The right. noise is actually virtual. Yeah. So you may not hear it, but when you look at the, the ITT, yeah. it's like buzzing, they're all giving comments, and that is, to me, is constructive noise yeah. as well. Yeah, that's a very useful point. Yeah. Um, maybe one last question. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I would like to know what are some SLS functions that promote differentiated learning, right? Currently, I only know subgroups does this. Yeah. So maybe some thoughts about this? I think it's also a very good question. Uh, differentiated learning may not just be differentiating on level of readiness. Yeah, usually, you know, um, whenever you go for workshops, right, we always have this perception that uh, DI means that I must design three types of 
materials for the pupils. But actually, it may not be that that way because we can also differentiate according to learning profiles. Mm. We can also differentiate according to learning interests. Mm. For example, like you know, doing check-ins with our pupils, right? Uh, usually, uh, for example, like, I'll, I'll do a pre-assessment mm. check-in to know what my pupils to not know at the start of the lesson. It's also one of the DI strategies. For example, like you know, uh, my interest-based task that I, that I always share on SGLDC uh, is also another way to have DI learning. Mm. That means mm. uh, providing choices for them to start, uh, providing choices for them to start their learning. So actually, DI may not be really three sets of worksheets. But it can be different approaches, different strategies that you want to consider. Mm. Yeah. For example, like uh, you know, you know uh, for my for my weaker pupils, right? I also provide self self help using the accordion so that mm. they are able to actually refer to when they need help. Yeah. So actually, um, uh, uh, so DI may not always be that three different types of uh, learning yeah. materials. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I think maybe just to add on to uh, Harley, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, what, what you're saying is that uh, you don't necessarily need to even use a feature la, like some mm. groups, right? You could actually potentially start off with a quiz or a, mm. a, a you know, question just to, just to solicit whether or not you answer, you can get it partially correct or co fully correct or wrong, mm. right? Mm. And with that, basically direct them to kind of say, actually, you know, if you got it wrong, maybe mm. you will want to try activity two. Right. Mm, if you got it ideas, right, you yes, yes. can try activity three without mm. having to actually potentially use a particular feature. Ah, right. Yes, okay? yes, 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 so yes, yes, giving yes. them the choice, uh, that's also differentiation, mm, right? Yes. So yeah. I would say that DI is more of a mindset. Mm. Uh, that means you must be mindfully thinking about helping your different learners mm. in your lesson design instead of just thinking about the features that can drive DI. Yeah. That yeah. means it's more of a mindset change. Yes. La, yeah. yeah. So even within the same activity, you could also have different approaches, la, right? Mm. So either approach A or approach B, really up to you to choose, mm. right? Without having yes. to even differentiate yes, the, yes, yes, the yes, activities yes. themselves, yes, yes. yeah? Yeah, just to share more, like, like for example, like, uh, my, my pupils are doing audio mm. recording. Uh, the weekend pupils may practice in pair first before they share their mm. video. And for the better learners, uh, for the more higher ability learners, they may actually do on their own before they share, mm. then they'll teach their peers. So mm. actually, it's the, it's the process that will actually mm. drive learning. It may not be that to itself. Mm. So, so uh, on that to itself, right, you, you can see all my pupils' work. But behind the process may not be that. May not just be, you know, I record, I share. Mm. Yeah, mm. so this is also how we can drive DI mm. using SLS. That's very useful. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, I mean, to add on, yeah. uh, it's really about, again, your lesson design. Mm. Because DI is... is, is a mindset, it's a mm. philosophy of how you reach out to every student. Yeah. And so, uh, things like allowing them to just choose which activity. So, you may, out of all the activities, you can have the first five is the must-do. That mm. means you must do these five. And then the other, the, the, the other three is uh, good to do. So, those who are more advanced, those who are more ready, they can do those. Mm. But those who are a bit slower, I can take. Yeah. So, self-paced learning, that's mm. also a way to, mm, to yes. differentiate. Uh, and giving them that choice yeah. of which tool to use or which, um, how do I want to present my yeah. answer. So that's why Products recording the, the product, right? Yeah. Mm. So recording is very powerful because I can choose to either record my screen, record myself, mm. or, or record my voice. So there are different ways of mm. choosing and, and creating a product. Yeah. So I, I think that's very, very useful. I mean, one of the other things that maybe just a quick kind of uh, sharing as well, which is that, I mean, we've observed also teachers that actually use SLS itself as a differentiating tool, right? In the sense that they might be largely teaching perhaps um, maybe a, a majority of the class, um, you know, uh, as frontal teaching, mm -hmm. right? Okay, um, but still have, say, for example, five to ten devices, right? Okay, mm -hmm. that is for the folks that need the additional scaffolding, their own help, because mm -hmm. they are not po potentially at the same level uh, as the rest of the class. So, mm. actually, the tool itself, the SLS lesson itself can be differentiated mm. itself. Mm. It means you're only assigning certain lessons to, to folks themselves that, uh, that require the extra, a, extra help. So, mm. that's also another way to, to do differentiation. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So, I think, uh, you know, just one last question. We wanted to make sure that, you know, the viewers are left with some uh, nuggets of wisdom from the two of you, right, okay, and especially I think in your role uh, as HOD ICT. So uh, maybe to, uh, to really start with Harley first, right, okay, what in your opinion is the most important, I think, factor reason for successful ad tech implementation in your schools? And this mm. is a question that I'm very interested because in, <laughs> I want to <laughs> I want to hear from, from you guys on the ground, right, okay, to really understand uh, what you think is really a, a very important factor, maybe the key lever that we can actually use to drive attack uh, implementation. Okay, uh, 
to drive uh, ag tech in, in, in our schools, right? Okay, uh, I feel that we should have a plan, a, a, a PD plan. Yeah. But of course, we must also con consider that because teachers, uh, they will love to learn new things. Mm. So like, like for my school, right, other than our school-wide PD workshops for teachers, we also have ICT interest-based workshops mm. for teachers to sign up. So that you know, uh, we, we are able to cater to teachers of different level of readiness and teachers with different learning uh, interests. Yeah. So other than having a common PD plan, you know, differentiated, mm. uh, other than planning workshops for teachers, I feel that we should also consider that we should always work with the IPHs, work mm. with our SDs and SSDs mm. to drive department learning focus so that teachers will be able to see the relevance yeah. and they'll be interested in learning and, and no matter what we do right we, we must always remember that our efforts should always go back to students yeah. they must they must be able to learn they must be they must be able to enjoy their learning yeah mm -hmm. and we can also have a, a three-year plan to, to ensure that our tech infusion will only get steeper over the years mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and of course, um, we must also have a common understanding when, whenever we con converse with teachers. For example, like for me myself, I, I, I always go back to SIS pedagogical scale for to have common understanding so the teachers will know what is our expectation. Mm -hmm. I also share a uh, lesson, ICT lesson format so that teachers will know because because every teacher to them, right, the definition of ICT lessons may, may be different. Mm -hmm. For one, they, she may feel that it's a, it's a quiz. The other teacher may feel that ICT lessons uh, may be just a discussion. Mm -hmm. So when we have a lesson format, uh, teachers will be clear of the expectation uh, in the lessons that they are supposed to design. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how we can actually ensure successful infusion of ICT in, in our school. Mm -hmm. So as a quick summary, you know, what you're saying is that we need to be intentional, have mm -hmm. an intentional plan. And this a part of this plan will be, you know, some way of some milestone checks, right, to say to make sure that basically we are deepening over time. Mm -hmm. And then also a way in which there is common language, right? Okay, what are the common skill sets that teachers must have? Mm -hmm. And perhaps common ways in which we can talk about uh, ICD infused lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's very useful. You know? I think for me, agree first, it's the common language. Mm -hmm. I think SLS pedagogical scaffold mm -hmm. gives everyone that that same mm -hmm. language. So it doesn't matter which school you come from, mm -hmm. we speak the same language. Mm -hmm. yes. And that allows us to be very intentional and be very mindful that it's the pedagogy that comes first, the design that comes first, and not the technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the other one that I want to really share is, uh, I mean, to answer this question, right, what's the most important factor? I think it's teachers. Uh, I get very excited when teachers come to me and say, hey, I have this idea, I want to do this. Mm. Rather than it's me telling you, hey, you all please do this. I have this plan, okay, you all have to follow my plan. I think the grounds up initiative, mm. that is more powerful and that's more sustainable. I'll just mm. give an example. Recently, uh, one of my lower primary math teacher, they came to me and said, we want to use Nearport for mm. formative assessment mm. uh, as, a, as a way to give feedback to children right. after they've learned. Then, it's like it blew my mind because we have never thought about it and we thought it's not possible because like formative assessment usually it's pen and paper yeah. they draw mm -hmm. and they write yeah. yeah but then i asked why why do you want to use nearport why can't a pen and paper i mean the yeah. test we use pen and paper yeah. so one of the reasons they gave is because uh, for lower primary they yeah. need to do a lot of drag and drop yeah. right so one of the for math they need to do groupings of groups of four yeah. so pen and paper you can't cut the picture i mean that's that's yeah. very time consuming yeah. so nearport allows them to drag Mm. And then after that, the teacher can see who has gotten the concept right. right. So that's so powerful. Uh, and persisting, it's another mm. aspect because this same teacher, when she shared with the level teacher, a lot of them said, no, it's too difficult. P1, you cannot do near port. It's too time consuming. It's very troublesome. Mm. But the teacher just said, let's do it. And then she <laughs> basically got everybody on board and said, okay, mm. let's do it. Mm. So that, that grounds up. And then after that, when they did the lesson, mm. the teachers were very excited and they were saying, hey, this works, mm. it actually works, and now they are thinking of, hey, can we do it for other topics, yeah. other levels? Yeah. yeah, so coming from the ground, getting teachers to really buy in, mm. uh, I think that's the most powerful, and that's really what I've been trying to do. Uh, so uh, one way that we grow our teachers is, I have this group of teachers, we call them the EPAT influencers, mm. right? Because mm. now we need to influence other people. So that's the most powerful, and mm. it's not just me, because everybody will say, you know, HUD ICT, you can do it. But if it comes from teachers, especially yeah. the more senior teachers, yeah. and if they are the ones doing it, I think it's, it's a lot more powerful. Yeah. So influencing other teachers from teachers, I think that's the most powerful yeah. way. Thanks for sharing the inspiring <laughs> story. Yeah, it's very good to hear. So if we introduced this um, thing uh, award that we have called uh, Friends of uh, SLS. And um, uh, really starting from this year. And Friends of SLS is an award that we want to give to um, folks that have uh, really contributed to the use of SLS, right, again, in various ways. And you know, like our guest today, um, they have, you have uh, uh, given uh, 
you know, user guides, right? It can share, you know, your knowledge about SLS features, functions, um, encourage the use of SLS in your in your schools and also in SGLDC, right? Okay, and it's actually open, um, a little bit different from some of the other uh, e-pedagogical awards, right? Okay, like SGLDC awards. Uh, uh, in the sense that you know it's not so much focused on e-pedagogy, right? Okay, so that you know even if you are a teacher that is um, perhaps just starting, perhaps you don't feel so confident about your e-pedagogical uh, grounding yet, right? Okay, but is really enthusiastic about SLS use, about EdTech use in general. Um, you know, you might have a chance uh, to be you know kind of appointed or awarded, uh, you know, uh, named uh, a friend of SLS. So, friend of SLS is uh, it's a two year thing, right? Okay, and there are a few things that uh, basically um, we we would like to uh, give, uh, award to our friends of SLS. Uh, I think the most exciting thing, hopefully, uh, is the the fact that we are going to give um, our friends of SLS um, a personalized uh, account in mm -hmm. our sandbox. Right, okay, which then allows you to um, uh, access uh, Sandbox anytime, uh, uh, but more importantly, probably one and a half to two months before every release, you have a chance to see all the uh, new release features, play, play with it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we hope that, of course, you, know, you can uh, provide some guides or you know, do some screenshots and get uh, uh, other colleagues excited also about that uh, thing. Then also the other things that we, we want to be able to do is that for live sharing, workshops, uh, user research that we're conducting from year to year, we will give you uh, early notice, right? Okay, and invite you uh, for some of these things if you, you can make it, right? Mm. Um, and most importantly, I think uh, we also put your names, right? Okay, the names of all the friends in, of SLS uh, in our SLS info site, right? Okay, and that will be... Uh, for a two-year period, of course, you know, renewable uh, after those two years. So I'm going to spend, I'm going to take some time, right? Okay, for those uh, who have been appointed for Friends of SLS, right? Okay, you'll be receiving uh, emails uh, as well as a letter through your principals um, over the next uh, two or three days, right? Okay, but here, since our guests are here, we thought we'll pass them the, uh, uh, the, the certificate. Right, okay, so maybe Harley first and then uh, <laughs> there we go. Right, okay, so no applause because <laughs> there's no studio audience. Right, okay, but you know, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for uh, all the contributions uh, that you, you have made to SLS usage, right, okay, over the last few years and over the next few coming years as well. Right, so to that, uh, thank you very much for, to the folks that have joined us. Um, and uh, have a good rest of the week, right? Okay, and uh, that's it for today's uh, live stream.